going through Great Lock right now. We're just waiting for the barge to come out of there. I'm gonna go in and get locked up or down. I don't know what direction we're going today. All right, barge is clear, they're out. It's our turn to go through now. We're on the wall, we got some fenders out, we got some long lines out. We're going down like two foot, he said. So we're just gonna kind of, we're holding on to the lines. One end is on our cleat, and then it gets wrapped around these yellow pilings here. Big radius, uh, like cement pilings, so it's easy for the line to just slip around. So as we go down, we just loosen up on the line that we're holding, the end that we're holding, and we just go down. Yeah, here we go. Piece of cake. Sierra just found out a, a little gem on the chart. Free, Throw me. Free docks in uh, free docks in Portsmouth, right where we're headed, just a few miles up the way, right in downtown Portsmouth. You can stay there up to 36 hours or something like that. That's pretty cool. We passed a lot of free docks though. We told you about the one in Oriental, right? Yeah. And the, then we passed like six today. Yeah. Yeah, like free overnight docks. It's always a nice little plus, especially for us because launching the dinghy still doesn't take a huge amount of time, but still a little bit of a pain. And especially in this area, there's not a ton of anchorages. And then when we want to get started, it's so easy just to toss off the lines and or pull on the lines onto the boat and just start motoring. We don't have to pull up the anchor or anything like that. Um, I don't know, just, just nice, especially when it's free. We stopped at Coin Jack and they had a restaurant that was really good. We ate there last night and they also had their very own roasted peanuts. We got a lot of them. <laughs> Super cool boats around here. These really cool boats over here. So we've been trying to decide since yesterday what we're gonna do. What we're doing. We're either gonna go up the Chesapeake and down to Delaware or out in the ocean all the way to either Ocean City or Loomis. I've never taken the ocean route around this area before and so far this will be the fourth time going taking the Chesapeake and Delaware route it's cool especially because Annapolis is up there but it's just longer it's like two or three extra days uh, that's really the only disadvantage right yeah the, the reason we want to stop at either Annapolis or Lewis is because or we Ocean have, City we have friends that we want to visit so you gotta find a spot to stop and see them. Yeah. And I think my grandparents are gonna come check out the boat. They were friends. That's who I was uh -huh. concerned <laughs> Me and my daddy's friend. So if the conditions in the ocean were bad, well, if they were if they were bad, then we would definitely just go up the Chesapeake down to Delaware. It's not a big deal, and that's what we've done in the past. But also, if they were really, really good, we would definitely do the ocean, but it's not really either. They're not bad. It's two to three foot, but they're, it's just the wind. There's no wind that is favorable for either route. 
it's just light and variable for the next couple days and so we figured if it was going to be light and variable we might as well have it be light and variable and be flat ish although the roughest water we've ever been in was in the delaware yeah <laughs> so maybe we should be This is a light ship. It's like a lighthouse, but it anchors out in the ocean to Mark Shoals and stuff. And we saw one in Lewis, Delaware last year. Do you remember what the name of that one was? No, but it was like very well done and set up and everything. Forget the name of that one. There's one in New York City, and that might be the one that was anchored off of Nantucket. I don't know, they're around the country. They're pretty cool. That's the light. Check this out, the dock around here is breaking up. There's like big chunks of wood floating around. One by our boat this morning. I must say that Portsmouth like wasn't even on our radar as like a place to go or see or anything. But it's pretty cool. Until we saw that free, the free dock over here, yeah. And then we went for a run yesterday and Walked around today and it is a cool little town. Definitely some history and really neat historic houses and buildings and stuff like that. And all the cool ships behind us. Sure, sure. All the Navy ships are doing work on. Definitely some spots that are just a little bit run down like this dock here. But they're working on it. Yeah, they're working on it. Closed for repairs. But overall it's pretty clean, clean nice town. Right on the other side of that, build, that building there is Norfolk, um, their waterfront, and you can take these water taxis here across to Norfolk. So I think we finally made our decision. We're going up the Chesapeake and down the Delaware. Again, we might change our minds. I don't know. I'll be looking at the weather and wind as we Leave. head 10 miles out to the mouth of the Chesapeake. But yeah, for now, going up the bay and down the bay. So we're so nuts being around these big ships everywhere. It's kind of intimidating. Like, you, it's just, they're huge, massive, those things. And just so many different kinds too, like Army Corps en engineer work boat up here. We got a bunch of little Coast Guard boats flying around. It looks like they're hanging out. It looks like a big Navy ship might be coming in. So we might get to check that out. That'd be pretty cool. Along with another like freighter type boat. Just trying not to get run down by these huge barges behind me. Check this boat coming in, that is so cool. So this whole area, Norfolk and, and Portsmouth and the whole area is home to these big cargo ships and there's a container 
shipping docks, I don't know what you call them, and navy yards and all that stuff. So all these big ships and tugs are coming in and out of here all day long. It's right at the mouth of the Chesapeake, which, which leads right into the Atlantic Ocean. So it's just a big hub for this kind of stuff. They're all like secured in there with barriers so, so you can't get in there with a the boat. Check this out, submarine up here. So I'm curious if any of you guys have ever been on these ships or worked on these ships even. They all have numbers on them. I'm pretty sure that's their identifying feature. I don't know if they have names or anything. The battleships at least. But I saw, we saw 78 before, 87, 72, 61, 55, 56, 24, 57. So if you guys if you guys have worked on any of these boats or been on any of them, let us know in the comments. Tell us tell us about them if you have any information. I'm curious. So cool. So many of them. This is seems like more than I've ever seen here before. decided to change our minds and we're gonna go ocean to Lewis Delaware instead of up the Chesapeake and down the Delaware it happens we change our mind a lot last minute no big deal so it'll be an overnight run I think it's like 100 and what 60 or 190 130 no that was to Ocean City wasn't it 130 140 miles something like that not too bad be there tomorrow. So right now, this roadway is called Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, and it's bridges in some spots and tunnels in other spots. So we're going over this section right now that's actually a tunnel. So cars are underneath us right now, and Sierra can't get over it. She thinks it's crazy. Insane in the membrane. And now for the best part of the whole entire trip. Ah. It's in reverse, so the props feather. All good. In the hood. Cheers. So the wind actually turned out to be better than we thought it was gonna be. It's, it's light, but it's perfect. It's like 10 to 12 knots, uh, a little more southeast than we, we thought it was gonna be more south, but it's a little more southeast, so we're on a beam reach and we're cruising like between six and eight knots. Perfect conditions, flat, flat seas, maybe like a two foot longer period swell, but super comfortable. Not going wood. Really nice sailing. Right at the mouth of the Delaware Bay, about to round Cape Hen Henlopen, Henlopen to, to get over to Lewis. 
We had uh, sailed most of the night. We had some good wind up until maybe around midnight and then the wind just completely died. So I took the sails down and we've been motoring ever since. The wind hasn't picked back up, unfortunately. But made it here, decent time. Looks a little foggy offshore and it's definitely a little colder. Like last night was like the first chilly night we've had. Just the water temperature is just, just getting a little chilly up here. But Sierra and I did three hour shifts each. Or she started around six. I started at nine. And we're just about here. Pulling into Lewis. Lewis is another one of the spots that wasn't really on our radar ever. Never really like heard about a lot of people going to it like as cruisers. I'm sure a lot of people in Delaware come here as like their summer vacation or like it's it's a beach town. And uh, but we came here last year just because we were trying to get to Cape May on Neverland, and it turned out to be super super rough in the Delaware Bay. So this shore was the lee shore. So we just came to Lewis instead of crossing over to Cape May because it was so rough. But it turned out that it was such a really nice little uh, little town, like beautiful, clean, some history, really cool, cool place. So we really like it. That's why we're stopping here. My grandparents are gonna come. They're gonna they want to come check out the boat and everything, and then we're gonna visit uh, Sierra's friend on Sunday. So, yep, that's where we're stopping. We're gonna dock because we have to leave the boat for a day and it'll be easy for my grandparents to get on and off. So we have a dock for a couple of days. But it's the city dock, really nice dock, right in like the center of everything in Lewis. So cool spot. It smells like spring, like that fresh, fresh cut grass and the marsh plants and the flowers. It, it, it we didn't really get start to get that spring smell until when did we start getting that spring smell like North Carolina northern North Carolina or Virginia then we actually actually got that you know that smell of fresh cut grass but it's kind of interesting the different besides the different scenery that we see the different smells we get up and down the coast and that smell is just so familiar to me because growing up in Long Island that was like that was the springtime smell I'm glad we did that. We changed our minds last minute and did that run in one shot because we got here in like 25 hours, all the way from Norfolk, from Portsmouth, all the way to here at 26 hours. So we got it all done in one shot instead of a few days, which is nice. Current rips pretty good through here. We have the current going with us right now. Um, and it's not too bad right now, but it can rip. It's gonna put my docking to the test a little bit. Let's see how it goes. That went way smoother than I thought. for watching our videos. I'm just here to tell you a couple things that we have new in our tool shop. We designed a stainless steel water bottle with our logo on it. We know how big of an issue plastic is in the ocean, on the beaches. So we wanted to give you an, an alternative, alternative option, which is here now. Um, keeps ice cold for over 12 hours, which is awesome because we don't have an ice maker and I love cold water also keep stuff hot so it's a great bottle and we also came out with a cutlery set bamboo reusable cutlery set so if you do a lot of takeout eat on the go this is great you don't have to use the plastic non-recyclable silverware anymore keep it in your car um, backpack purse whatever you need to and it's always there comes in a cool little carrying case so 
those are two new options for you. Head on over to the Tula shop and check them out. Thank you for not using plastic.